Hello everyone and welcome to another game from round 2 of the 2020 candidates tournament. It's Maxim Vashiolagra vs Ding Liren. Uh, Maxim uh, had a very nice game yesterday against Fabi. We already checked out that game uh, that ended in a draw but the Ding started uh, the tournament with a loss and uh, uh, well it, it, he definitely wants to bounce back and get back uh, into this tournament. Uh, so what happens here? Uh, well, let's let's just check it out. We do have a nice photo uh, of the matchup uh, here. You can see Maxim. It's still a position from the opening. Uh, Ding uh, uh, either not psyched about the game or still maybe thinking about his loss yesterday. Uh, but could be a lot of other things as well. Or maybe it's just a you know a photo that that's uh, captured in a in a perhaps not an uh, not an optimal moment. Uh, but either way, just to uh, get into the mood for the game, and also I've prepared uh, their head-to-head -head score, which, um, I don't know, I, I kind of think you might be interested in those. Uh, so, in classical games, as you can see, Maxim Vashiel Lagrave beat Ding Liren 4-2 with 10 draws, so Maxim leading in classical. And if you include rapid and exhibition games, Maxim Vashiel Lagrave beat the Ding Liren 12-5, so in both classical and faster time formats, uh, Maxim uh, has, has an edge against uh, Ding Liren. So let's see, let's see what happens here. Uh, Maxim with the white pieces opens with e4. Uh, we have e5 by Ding, knight f3, knight to c6, and again bishop to b5. Uh, Maxim goes for the Rui Lopez with a6. Uh, Morphe's defense, bishop to a4, and the knight to f6 now. Uh, we have castles, bishop to e7, uh, and rook to e1. Uh, we have b5, all standard stuff, bishop to b3, and now castles. And here h3, not, uh, not going for c3 and allowing some... Uh, martial positions to, uh, to arise, so h3 uh, and bishop to b7 by Ding. Uh, we have d3, uh, d6 and now a3, uh, making room for the light square bishop if uh, let's say something like knight to a5 is played uh, to make room for the c pawn. Uh, we have queen to d7 by Ding and now knight to c3, continuing development and rook f to e8. And here Maxim decided to go for bishop to d2. It's a move that uh, has been played before a few times but uh, 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 never never has uh, white achieved more than a draw with this idea. Uh, from more, more notable games, uh, Ivan Sharic versus uh, Dmitry Svetushkin was played uh, in 2015, the game ended in a draw. Uh, but okay, knight to d8 by Ding, now making room for the c pawn, but also with ideas of shifting this knight over to e6. And now, uh, there there are known moves, knight to h2 is a known move, and also knight to e2 is a known move, but here uh, Maxim goes for knight to d5, and this is what he prepared for this game. Uh, so as of move 13, we have a completely new game. And here Ding has to decide whether he wants to uh, mess up white's pawn structure by capturing on d5, or he wants to continue with, let's say, knight e6, captures, captures, and play this position, having uh, access to maybe f4 and d4 squares. So both ideas uh, have their merits, uh, but uh, uh, Ding goes for knight captures on d5. And okay, we have e captures on d5, and now uh, the position is uh, such that uh, white has a double d pawn, and also the light square bishop isn't doing all that much now. Uh, but Maxim wouldn't do this if he didn't prepare something, uh, uh, you know, probably. Uh, so c5 here by Ding. c6 is also an idea. You might want to get rid of this uh, uh, d5 pawn here. It does seem like a nuisance. Uh, for example, if c4, you could go captures, captures, uh, and then f6, strengthening the position, uh, and then you could use maybe the open c file for your rook. Uh, but the Ding is, uh, decides to go for c5 for a very specific reason. Uh, he wants to have this option of playing c4 as he wants to play f5 and f playing f5 without uh, the inclusion of this uh, c4 uh, c5 c4 idea uh, doesn't work because if f5 then just knight captures an e5 if this knight if this pawn was still here and then you have this discovery uh, checking the black king so here uh, we have a4 uh, B uh, trying to bust open the position and then now f5 and this is what uh, Ding was planning uh, now the same idea with knight captures and e5 doesn't work because after captures you have this check uh, but now Ding has c4 with the inclusion of c5 d captures and bishop to f6 now and here even after even it would best play let's say a captures and b5 a captures uh, a trade of rooks captures captures and now c captures and b5 Ding would have a very nice pawn here on d6 and also uh, a very nice nice pawn here on, on b5. Uh, the, the black king is in check, you have to move it. Now let's say bishop to b4, defending the pawn. 
and uh, it's a complicated position, but uh, Ding, sh Ding should be better. Uh, there is no real compensation for, for the piece, although those pawns do look scary. Uh, for example, uh, you cannot capture the pawn here because if d7, then the rook has no squares. The, the bishop pair is extremely strong here. So, after f5, uh, Maxim uh, knows that he can't play this, but there is a move that he can play, and it's such a... Uh, it's hard to say. I, I didn't catch an interview, uh, but... Uh, it's hard to say if he's still in preparation or was this uh, a move that happened over the board, but I know it wasn't played like instantly. He played a captures on b5, a captures, rook captures, bishop captures, and now c4. Uh, c4 is extremely strong because uh, you're just threatening to win a pawn and there doesn't seem to be anything Ding can do about it. If you capture a bishop to a4, just wins the game. Uh, you either have to move the queen and lose a whole rook, or you have to give up the knight here, but then just capture us here, you're going to capture the knight on the next move. Uh, it's completely winning for Maxime. So after the c4 move, Ding goes knight to f7, reinforces e5, and he says, okay, there's... Uh, there's time for uh, for other things because there's nothing I can do about the b5 pawn and Maxim just captures it. B captures uh, uh, c captures on b5. Uh, so what happens now? Again, you cannot capture because of well, you just lose the game here. Okay, not not right away, uh, but you will lose the exchange and after that, uh, you don't really have anything to show for it. You will lose this against Maxim. So instead, after c captures on b5, uh, Ding played g5. And uh, what what's going on here? Of course, he wants to play g4, start an attack against the white king, and say, uh, okay, your your one pawn doesn't really do anything on the queen side. I'm going to attack on the king side. Problem is, uh, it's now Maxim to move. So you can even feel free to pause the video if you're interested. In what you would play uh, as white here if Ding was coming for you. Uh, so feel free to do it while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who found it, and uh, it is the move Maxime played, congratulations. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, knight to h2 is the move, as it prevents g4. Now, if g4, you just trade everything. You don't really care. Even with check, you have to trade queens, and then you're just up two pawns. Not much black can do about this. Uh, so uh, that's one thing. You've prevented g4, but also you can infiltrate with queen to h5, which can also be... Uh, pretty unpleasant. So here we have king to g7 by Ding. He wants to bring the king over to g6 now. Uh, and we have bishop to c4. Now just strengthening uh, the pawns here. So you, you no longer have to worry about that b5 pawn ever again. And you have a passed b5 pawn for the rest of the game. And also b4 is coming, which will be which will be a very strong move. We have king to g6 by Ding. Now not allowing queen h5. Also with ideas of h5 maybe. Uh, but now g4, stopping h5 and also asking, are you prepared to open up the position with your king still on g6? And the uh, thing is, if captures, captures, then uh, it's uh, very, very difficult for black to activate any of the pieces. This bishop not doing anything. The queen, uh, due to the g4 pawn, not really able to do anything. Uh, the knight also not, 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 not the greatest of pieces. You're just going to go knight f1, knight g3 to f5, uh, place your knight there, and then you can even do something like queen a4 to a6, b6, uh, maybe push the pawn later on. Uh, well, basically, and so on. So uh, it would be very dangerous to capture it. So instead, knight to h6 by Ding uh, and now reinforces f5, but now queen to f3 puts more pressure on f5. Uh, and here, uh, you could uh, block the position completely with f4, but then you allow queen to e4 check, and knight is coming to f3. It could be could be very ugly. So uh, you maybe, maybe you should postpone something like this until you have to play it. So first, bishop to d8. Ding knows that b4 is coming, and he wants to be ready with this bishop to b6 move. Also, the rook will now be able to help out along the e file. Uh, we have queen to g2. Now, uh, Maxim has ideas of capturing on a5, and then both the queen and the bishop will be eyeing that uh, g5 pawn. The knight can come to f3 to help out with the attack. h4 can be played. So a lot of pressure with Ding's king still being on g6. So here, uh, it's extremely difficult to find the move for black. So uh, basically, you can choose an active move like Ding chose. Uh, he, Ding played f4 here, but if you play a, a slow move like bishop to b7, you just wait and see what white has in store. Uh, then it's uh bishop b7 might actually be the best move for ding uh, even though it, it's not much it's just waiting but the the point is after g captures on f5 uh, uh with check you're gonna play queen captures on f5 uh, and then you're gonna lose the game terribly because after f4 
uh, you cannot capture with this because your rook hangs you cannot capture with the g pawn uh, because well there's just the pin you cannot capture with the queen bishop guards that and then whatever you play let's say bishop c8 you're just going to play f captures and g5 push back the knight and then h4 uh, and so on it's uh, much much better for white so the point is after bishop to b7 and uh, a continuation that's extremely difficult to find g captures on f5 and now not capturing but instead knight capture not capturing with the queen but rather with the knight and then after knight to f3 uh, putting more pressure here king to g7 this is the key move you have to find uh, the point is, uh, if white goes after the pawn with the knight and the bishop, you have, you have king h8, and then you bring the rook over to g8 and harass white along the g file. But it's still uh, very difficult. After h4, you're going to play king to h8, captures on g5, and here you have this position where white is up two pawns, but it's an incredibly crazy position where white should be better on all accounts, but in a practical game over the board, it's hard to say what, what can happen. Uh, but definitely uh, bishop to b7 with um, just wasting a move checking if white will go for this with the idea of king g7 h8 and rook g8 maybe maybe ding's best idea uh, or, or maybe king g7 right away uh, uh, point is you have to wait and see what white will do but instead ding went for f4 and now like we said this allows this queen to e4 uh, maneuver uh, so uh, maxine continued with b4 it's a move that has to be played uh, you, you of course have to bust open the position here Ding played bishop to b6, and now, once again, feel free to pause the video and try to find the winning move for Maxim while I give you a couple of seconds. So, uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting that, uh, well, if queen comes to e4, and then the rook queen along the e-file uh, will be x-raying that rook on e8. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, it's either captures on c5 or queen e4 check. It's the same line, only a different move order. So either you capture and then queen e4 check, or you play queen e4 check like Maxime did, and then you capture on c5. So king g7, b captures on c5, and now you have problems. If bishop captures, d4 is incredibly strong. Again, you cannot capture because the rook hangs. Uh, you have to capture with the bishop, but now knight f3 threatening to capture here. Again, you will not be able to recapture because the rook hangs, so king f8 defending the rook, but now bishop b4. Again, uh, with a lot of pressure, now the... Uh, you will not be able to recapture here. So rook to e7, uh, now knight captures on e5 is no longer a threat, but now queen d3. Also one of the uh, one of the nice things about playing d4 is that you freed the d3 square for the queen. And now g5 hangs uh, if you defend it, uh, for example, with knight f7, then queen to h7 is an idea. And there's just not much you can do about this. For example, if, if you go and defend it, then white can't play pretty much anything. Queen to a3 is the cleanest way to finish it off as it comes with a double attack against the bishop and the d6 pawn. Uh, black can, uh, simply can't keep, uh, keep an eye on everything. So instead, after this, b captures on c5, ding didn't go for bishop captures, but for d captures on c5, and now Maxim just continues, knight to f3, uh, puts more pressure here on the g5 pawn, knight to f7, now guarding both of these pawns, and bishop to c3 now, again, putting more pressure here. Bishop to c7, defending, and now b6 by Maxime. Beautiful move, again, uh, if you capture, it's, uh, it's not, uh, it's not uh, well, it's not uh, the, uh, the greatest move for black because you no longer defend on e5 and after captures, captures with check. King to g8, you have d6. Again, opening up a discovery. Uh, the bishop pair is just uh, beautiful here for, for, uh, for Maxime. Even though Ding has a bishop pair as well, although it's not as operational as a Maxime's bishop pair. King f8, you're going to go bishop to g7 check crazy move of course if queen captures then queen captures on e8 is mate so king would have to capture but then you just go into this end game which is of course completely winning it's not just that you're out the exchange you are completely winning as d7 d8 is unstoppable if bishop c6 you just play d7 and after captures check and you pick up uh, well the bishop and you are you are uh, down a whole rook so after b6, of course, you cannot capture it. The ding played bishop to b8. Uh, and now, uh, Maxim could uh, keep the pressure with rook to b1, threaten b7. Uh, but he decides that it's no longer needed. He can just trade queens now and go into an endgame here. So uh, Ding trades with queen captures uh, because now there's a, well, there's a double attack here. There's there's a quadruple attack on, uh, on e5. Not much you can do about that. So Ding decides to trade and here king f6. And it seems like Ding is defending everything. 
Uh, but uh, Maxime has something to say about that. Knight to d2. Now, he wants to get the knight over to e4 to deliver check. And if you force the king to capture on f5, it could be could be very unpleasant. Uh, although, this might actually be the best way for Ding. I'm just going to show a line. Uh, it's extremely complicated, but uh, such things are normal when two super grandmasters play a, a super prepared engine line. Of course, uh, there are a lot of poisonous ideas in the position. For example, if king captures on f5, bishop to b5, attacking the rook here, you move the rook and now bishop to c6, hoping for black to capture and you will get two connected pass pawns. Uh, but of course, black not interested, bishop b7, now the rook guards the bishop and now knight to c4. Uh, you're going to play something, you don't have all that many moves with black, h5, you're going to go rook to a1. Uh, let's say g4, captures, captures, uh, you're going to go rook to a5, you're going to pick up this pawn, you're going to be up a pawn, and then probably probably end up winning the game. But it still it still could, could get ugly. For example, f3, rook captures on c5, you're going to go knight to d6, uh, rook to a5, getting the rook out of the way, uh, and now e4. Uh, so let's say knight captures on d6 with check, bishop captures and rook to a7 with a double attack on the bishop. Now black could try even e3. So uh, I'm just uh, showing uh, how, how rich the position is. For example, if you give up the piece, even e captures an f2 check is an idea. And now you don't want to capture here uh, and allow ideas like rook to e2 check, bishop to c5 check. So you have to play king to f1 and then a lot of crazy ideas are possible. Uh, bishop to c8, you don't want to allow that because then the pawn just advances, so you have to block it. But still, let's say bishop c6, rook e2, and it's it's a really crazy position. White is of course better, but uh, if you allow something like bishop here and let's say something like this, then then white is just done for. So that's uh, what, what uh, you know the position holds if you play king captures on f5. Uh, Ding decides against it. Ding plays the rook to d8 instead. Uh, now going for this pawn here, but Maxime just continues with d6. He gives up the pawn, but on d6 he wants to free up this diagonal. And also the d5 square for his bishop, as you'll see. So Ding captures the pawn, and now comes rook to b1, threatening b7. And here there are two ideas you could go for. Bishop to c6 is one of them, not allowing your bishop to be trapped after b7. Uh, but then you allow knight to e4 check, which kind of will pick up your rook. So you will have to give up the bishop here. And then uh, again, not much you can do here with black. You could try h5. But then b7 and after, let's say, g4, captures, captures, you're still going to go for rook to a1. Uh, rook to b6, you go after the pawn. Uh, but now bishop to d5 guarding the pawn. Next, you're going to go rook to a8 and... Uh, it should be should be winning for white. Uh, so after rook to b1, uh, b bishop to c6, as you can see, and not really all that great. So Ding says, uh, well, let's just prevent this pawn from ever being pushed here. He goes knight to d8. But now, once again, for the final time, uh, feel free to pause the video and uh, you know finish this game uh, once and for all. Uh, well, I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting that the pawn actually must be pushed. Uh, as you all know, pass pawns must be pushed. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's b7. The move Ding set out to stop now is, uh, you know, the move that causes his undoing. So problem is, uh, if you capture it, let's say with the knight, knight captures on b7, then you go knight e4 check. Uh, of course, the bishop no longer has access to e4. King captures, knight captures with check, knight captures, and now you pick up the bishop here. And well, let's say captures, captures, you're just up a whole rook, uh, completely winning endgame for white. So after b7, Ding decided to go for bishop captures on b7. But now the move you of course saw once you found b7 is bishop to a5. Simply attack the defender of the bishop on b7. And now the threat is I pick up the knight, next I pick up the bishop. Or if you move the bishop, I pick up the dark square bishop. So whatever you do, you're losing a piece here. Uh, there's nothing more to be done here. And in move 37, it was in this position that Ding Liren resigned the game. And incredible as it is, uh, Ding Liren starts the 2020 candidates tournament with 0 out of 2, which is just incredible. And uh, I've seen a lot of you in the comments asking uh, how is this possible and it, does it have to do something with, with the coronavirus and everything. Well, uh, it's hard to say, but it's one of the reasons Temur Rajabov uh, 
said that he will not be playing the tournament because he said if if uh, 99% of my 99 of my mental capacity goes towards the chess game and only 1% of my mental capacity is worrying about anything else uh, in the chess world about my family about the me uh, me me catching the virus about anything then that's no longer uh, me at my best and uh, it could be that this is what hap uh, what happens to Ding here because in a lot of moments uh in a lot of moments, Ding had uh, better options, and uh, well, uh, it's it's very unlikely that someone who can go over a hundred games uh, undefeated in classical chess uh, will start with a zero out of two for for a tournament he's basically been preparing for uh, the the last three months. Uh, but yeah, uh, Maxime is also kind of a wild card here, and uh, no one actually expected him to be here, so no one probably prepared for him, and he will be able to surprise a lot of players. So it should be should be extremely interesting. Uh, but we're going to show at least one more game from round two, and then we're going to discuss the standings a bit more. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, as usual, I'm always interested. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? And do you think Ding will be able to bounce back? And um, is he still a contender to win? Uh, because if you remember, in the last candidates tournament, uh, Ding uh, uh, played out through the entire tournament without a single loss. And uh, he still wasn't able to, to, to clinch first place. But, uh, you know, it's still early. We'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. I would like to thank Federico Tangochi for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of the FIDE Candidates Tournament 2020 uh, and, uh, well, whatever else we, we manage the time for, maybe on a rest day or something like that. Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.